afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Live at Four. A man who shot and injured three people at a Middleton software company is dead. It happened this morning at a company called WTS Paradigm that's on Deming Way in the Greenway Station area. And that's where our Eric Franke picks up the coverage. Eric? Carlin and Susan, good afternoon. This all started just before 10.30 this morning, about 10.25. A Dane County Communication Center started to get those calls of an active shooter situation. It was in the 1800 block of Deming Way. We want to get the latest update shooter. for that now. We turn to Middleton Police, Police Chief Chuck Folk. Dispatch. Dane County Sheriff's officer, Officers uh, and deputies were also requested to assist. Um, they arrived very quickly, and I can give you the timeline later if you like. But within minutes, uh, they went inside and uh, did engage the suspect. Um, there were four officers that fired their weapons at the suspect, uh, two of those being Middleton police officers, two of those being Dane County Sheriff's um, deputies. Uh, obviously, at this stage of the investigation, we don't know um, who struck um, the suspect, how many times he was struck or whatever, uh, but the suspect was um, stopped by those responding police officers. Uh, very heroic in their actions, um, from what I'm, I've been told, and I believe um, pr prevented much more um, uh, bloodshed um, from happening. Uh, a lot less chaos occurred because of their actions. The suspect is deceased. Um, we will not be releasing his name at this time. That will be up to the medical examiner, and obviously the medical examiner would need to notify the family in order to do that. Um, as you can imagine, a pretty chaotic scene with those officers um, that first went in. There were a total of probably 10 police officers slash deputies that went into the business. As I said, four engaged the suspect. Um, we have reason to believe that the suspect was heavily armed um, with a lot of extra ammunition, a lot of extra uh, magazines. So again, their actions and their quick actions, things that we train for, for an active shooter, but hope will never happen did happen, but the training worked, and it did um, put a stop to this incident. Um, there are three other people who were wounded seriously. They all uh, were taken to hospital. We don't have an update on their conditions other than to tell you those are serious injuries. There's a fourth person that received what I would describe as a grazing type of injury. Uh, that did go to the hospital, but again, that injury is not uh, not that severe. Um, we do have a family reunification center, and that's at the uh, Marriott Hotel, 1313 John Q. Hammonds Drive. So um, if people need to meet up with their relatives, we're going to keep that open until 5 p.m. As you can imagine, since this happened 1030 or so, that I think most people have been reunited. But we did have a number of people to interview. Uh, and, and so once we interview those people, then they're being released and can go over to that hotel and can um, meet with their relatives if, if they so choose. There's a lot of um, people working on this case. As you can see behind me, a pretty impressive um, array of law enforcement officials. Um, the FBI is assisting, funny enough, well not funny, but the FBI resident agency is about a block away. So they were uh, there almost as, as fast as our first responders. Uh, of course, Sheriff is here. Um, DCI is also involved in this, and that's because this is an officer-involved shooting. So because of the state law, the uh, Division of Criminal Investigation is um, our choice and Sheriff's choice for investigating those types of incidents, and that's why they are here. Um, Madison Police has been invaluable to us. They've been assisting us quite a bit. And I'm sure I'm leaving out another, uh, a number of other police agencies that were in that first response. But I can tell you that even by the time I arrived and saw that sea of red and blue lights, it was an impressive response. And uh, we're lucky to live in a county that we can have a response like that. Um, we are offering um, services to um, witnesses who observe this, obviously a traumatic experience for them. So a victim witness from both the state and um, uh, the county are um, making arrangements to talk to anyone that feels that they need that assistance. The FBI has also offered their victim witness people if need be. Uh, and depending on how many people are involved, um, how many people witness this or the aftermath of it, we may reach out to them also. Um, as you can imagine, um, we're quite busy right now. 
Uh, and I don't have a lot of answers, so uh, I'll be happy to try to answer some questions. But if you're going to ask me about the motive, I don't know. And I don't know anything about the background of the suspect. And as I said, we're not going to release his name, so I, I just can't tell you anything about him. But if you have some questions, uh, go ahead. Other than that suspect. What's the relationship between the suspect and WT, WTS paradigm? I can't tell you that. He was an employee there. So it wasn't unusual for him to be in there. Um, he, you know, he had a reason to be there. But anything else beyond that, I don't know, and it would just be speculation on my part if there was any, you know, type of uh, issues going on between he and police. We just don't know that. Other than the suspect, any other fatalities? No. But you just were clear. Really, four people were sh four people were shot plus the gun. That's correct. Correct. Right? Okay. Were the, those who were all shot by the gunman? Yes. Yeah, and that, you know, that's a fair question, and that investigation is un, uh, ongoing. So could that be the case? Perhaps. It's not my understanding. I don't believe that to be the case, but I guess I shouldn't defend it to be saying that that's impossible. What was sort of the layout of the, the building? How many people were in there at the time? Of this? Well, and the, the two buildings themselves, a lot of people. There's a lot of different offices in there. What the, um, what the employee number is in WTS Paradigm, I, I, I'm not sure. But I can tell you that our responding officers, maybe you could say the second wave, were met by a stampede of people exiting exactly as they should be. But there are a lot of people that have been affected by this just by the, the kind of the vicarious trauma of um, hearing the gunshots and getting out. Can't give you a number of people, though, sir. And are you searching the suspect's home, or what are you doing as far as the investigating the suspect and all that right now? Right, I don't want to get into specific things that we're doing now because some things are unfolding as we speak. But you can imagine that we're doing following up on all investigative leads, and you know you would imagine that. Are you trying to would be one of them. obtain a warrant right now? I'm not going to go any further than that. Do you want to tell us about the kind of weapon that he was using? The other weapon? Uh, the shooter had a pistol. Uh, semi-automatic pistol. Uh, we're told that he had a number of magazines, extra magazines, and so on. Um, but other than that, I don't, I don't, um, it w not an assault rifle, for instance. So. Any body armor? Uh, I don't know that. Well, you said he was an employee, so did he come to work in his regular time, or did he come late? Don't know. Was it just a hospital? Yes. He died at the hospital. Uh, UW Hospital, I believe. A number of witnesses have told us that he was sitting at when he stood up and started firing. Can you can at least confirm that? I can't, but I, I don't doubt that. But I, I haven't gotten the down and dirty details yet. As you can imagine the, uh, the involved officers came back here. Um, they uh, have their union representation. WPPA is providing services to them. They're absolutely cooperative. And, uh, and then DCI does their investigation. And I'm not privy to that. So I don't know those answers. So, so this is in a situation where this guy walks into the building and starts shooting. He was already in the building, established himself at his workplace, and then starts shooting. Yeah, let's not get into that specific, because I don't know that. I know he worked there, and he, had, he was allowed to be in that building. So did he walk in and start shooting, or had he sat there for an hour? Speculation on my part, I don't know. Chief, how did the law enforcement officers who neutralized this threat, how did they enter the building? Did they have to break in? Were they allowed in? How did they enter the building? I don't know that. Good question. Um, I, I don't know. Do you know uh, if I have security at the right time? I don't. And this has been a big day for you guys. I mean, you said that there a lot of training had been in place for something like this, but for it to actually happen, I mean, describe that. Yeah, I know uh, Sheriff and I came back and talked to um, to our staffs that were directly involved in that. And it was an emotional moment for, for both Dave and I, um, uh, because we do train for this. But of course, we hope it will never happen. But um, they did what they were supposed to do. And they did what we trained. And you know, we learned from this stuff, unfortunately. Um, and, and we know that we can't wait. We can't wait to get a team together or whatever. They go in individually. And they're well, well trained to that. They have a lot of equipment. They have uh, rifles, they have ballistic vests that they put on. I know one of our sergeants grabbed a ballistic shield. Um, so they have the equipment, they have the training, but man, we hope we never have to use it. And um, yeah, I didn't think we'd be using it in Middleton, but we did today. Chief, do you happen to know around how many employees he came in contact with while he was inside? I don't. I don't know how many, um, I don't know how many shots were fired. I don't know how many people were in work for WTS Paradigm. I just don't know. I can tell you that that business and that building, or those two buildings, will be closed for some time. I don't know if it's 24 hours or 48 hours. We're asking um, employees um, to check their emails. Uh, the owner of that building 
has been notified and we'll let him know when we release that building. As you can imagine, a lot of evidence collection that's going on inside that building. Um, very well could take overnight. So that business or those businesses probably will not be open tomorrow. Do you even know how long these uh, shooters have worked there? Don't, don't know that. Do you have a name uh, We're not releasing his name in the medical exam. I mean, do you have an age? Oh, an age? I don't know. Do you have a timeline of when the call? Yeah, I can, uh, let me give you that uh, quickly. Yeah, that was pretty quick. Uh, so we got the call at 10.26.44. First officer arrived at 10.29.48. Uh, by 10.31.21, there were one, two, three, four, five, six Middleton officers there. So, when did the... And sheriff, I don't have the sheriff timeline. When, when did the two Middleton police officers and the two Dane County Sheriff's deputies engage the suspect? Yeah, I don't know. Sometime that. after, so had, had he been... Okay. Uh, and he'd been violent for 10 or 12 minutes before. Okay. Okay. And then uh, it looks like our officers were in contact with the suspect at 10.34 a.m. Did the officers so, again, that's contact with him minutes. while they were inside the, the office space? Did they have what? Were they inside or outside? Oh, inside. Did yes. How, how far into the building did he talk about? Uh, I'm sorry. I don't know, Barry. Did you say outside the building is where they engaged him? No, inside. Inside. And you said you guys had trained for this. Do you think that WTS had been training for this? What is the, you know, the teachable moment and all that? Uh, well, good question, and it may be a bit early for that, but I know um, the Sheriff's Department and our department do a lot of training for uh, response to an active shooter. I don't know specifically if WTS Paradigm or any other um, of those businesses have um, taken part in that training, but I know by tomorrow we were talking that we would like to get some of that information out again on things to do um, when there is an active shooter. But um, training is a big part of what we do um, to the community also. So thanks for bringing that up. Chief, does it, appear how, did it, did, does it appear he targeted his victims or was this a random act of gunfire at that point? What can you tell us? So no, sorry. You know, we fired at any law enforcement. I totally did fire at our officers, yes. You know, you know, when? Um, well, uh, we would consult with DCI, and when they're comfortable with that, we would do that. Do you, do you know how many times he fired his weapon? I don't. At all? I don't. Do you know how many settings of where he started shooting as, and where officers engaged? I do not know that. I know that he was in what I would describe as like a cube farm, you know, an office setting when he began firing, but I don't know where that is in relation to the entry or where the officers came in. It's just too early, sorry. Does he have a criminal uh, I don't believe he does have a criminal background, no. Have you had any contact with him as a department for any reason? Welfare, check, anything? No. Is he, is he from? Where is he from? Is he from Middleton? Uh, he lives uh, in the city of Madison. Um, and so, um, maybe one more question, and I think... Uh, yeah, and um, uh, probably that should come from the hospital, but we're told that three of the victims were seriously injured. Um, and whether where that fits into that whole continuum, I don't know. But they were serious gunshot um, injuries requiring, you know, um, well, obviously hospitalization, but um, um, that type of uh, critical care. And the fourth one was the walking, um, had a little bit of a... Are those three expected to survive? Yeah, I, I don't know that. Sorry. You said the active shooter training worked. What do you mean by worked? Well, I think a lot less people were injured or killed because police officers went in and neutralized the shooter, and that's what we're trained to do. And that has evolved over the years. Uh, back in Columbine days, you waited for a SWAT team to come. Even a few years ago, you'd wait till you had three or four people and you'd form a team and you'd go in. Now we don't have that luxury. We know that timing is so critical, and so anytime there's an active shooter in a target-rich environment, police officers go in, and that's what they did in this case. I'm convinced, the sheriff is convinced, that that saved lives today. Does that building have security? Was there I just don't know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Do you know how many times the suspect was hit? I don't know that. And uh, one more question, and then I think we're going to cut it off. Is there security now? I don't know that. Police, Middleton police officers wear body-worn cameras, and there is video of that. What's the situation on the perimeter right now as far as... Can people go back to Greenway Station? Give the public an update on that, please. Okay, thanks. Um, so obviously we have set up a, we've shrunk the perimeter significantly. We have officers around the perimeter of that building.
But as far as getting into Greenway and so on, it's a, it's an all clear, and you can get in there. Chief, so at least one eyewitness told us from another building they were uh, led out by police, hands above their head. Um, was this a part of clearing the general area? If you could talk about how you responded to others in the area in the moments of this shooting. I don't even know that. I, I didn't see that. I, very well may be true. It may would, just would be that, that... Would that be according to protocol? Yeah, yeah I, I've seen that, and I also know that some people probably just do that um, because they've seen it on TV also. So whether or not we... Were that well organized that early on to do that, or people just did that on their own? I, I don't know. I, I just don't know that right now. So, thanks, folks. Is there going to be another briefing today? Not today. Not today. Thank you very much. That would be Middleton Police Chief Chuck Folk with uh, the the tale of a pretty amazing response today by first responders. 10:26. That first call came in. Eight minutes later, those officers had engaged that suspect, who they say was heavily armed, responding uh, in such quick fashion, uh, enabled them to keep the casualty count uh, at a very small number, the only fatality to report the shooter himself. Now, amid all this chaos, as you can imagine, workers from this building, WTS Paradigm, behind me, uh, a couple hundred yards, uh, scrambling, just leaving everything behind them, uh, their, their office work, their vehicles, and, and taken to a safe location. Amid that chaos, family members now are looking to reconnect with those workers who are here in this building. You heard uh, Chief Folk talk about how some of them are still being uh, interviewed as witnesses. They are being asked to reunite at the Marriott West, which is just a short distance away from us on the other side of Greenway Boulevard. And that's where we find our Rose Schmidt reporting on what the next steps are as those families try to reconnect. Rose? Well, Eric, like you said, it's been such a tough day for people here in Middleton, and that's why the managers at this hotel offered it up as a space for people to reconnect with their loved ones. They said they didn't know whether to expect 50 people or 500 people, and we've only seen a few, a handful of people come in here today, but they've been coming and going, and as the chief mentioned before, this space will be open until 5 o'clock tonight, and depending how many people come, um, officials told us they were considering offering counseling services here. It's obviously been a traumatic day for so many people in Middleton, including one woman we spoke to who sheltered in place, using the words scared and nervous to describe how she was feeling. Then we started hearing gunshots. And so we're, you know, looking out and seeing all these police officers getting out of their vehicles, running towards the building. And we're like, uh, what should we be doing? What's going on? We had no clue as to anything that was going on. Marlene told us she's a single mom and she often thinks about this happening at schools, but never the place where you work. Marlene and her coworkers took shelter where they were. They made sure that the building's door was locked. They stayed away from windows and they just waited for police to evacuate them. She says she called her family to make sure that they knew she was okay. And of course, for anyone who is looking to reconnect with their family or friends, they are able to come here to the Marriott West Hotel here in Middleton. Back to you. Rose Schmidt reporting live not too far away from us now. Uh, we mentioned uh, the, the timeline earlier today. That building, by the way, just about 200 yards. I don't know if you can see it. It's kind of a mustard color. That's the building there of uh, WTS Paradigm where this uh, shooter, as Chief Folk mentioned, was an employee but didn't give too many more details at this time about the shooter. Those details will come in the hours and days ahead. But uh, as precautionary measures, they are staying with a tight line around that building. And right now, for the purpose of trafficking, information. We are standing right in the middle of Deming Way. It is closed off basically from us all the way to the north to University Avenue. So you can get around the Greenway Station, obviously a very busy area throughout the course of the day. You can get around Greenway Station, but don't try to go north on Deming Way as police continue to do their investigation. We'll have much more coverage live from the scene tonight at 5 and 6. We're going to go back to Charlotte and Susan in studio with more coverage on what was a very busy day in Middleton. Eric, thank you so much. Uh, major